And so Alessandra is a researcher at the Italian National Research um, Council. Uh, he's been there since 2019 uh, and no, he has been since 2019 to the Research Institute for Geohydrological Protection in Padua. Uh, previously, he was with the Institute of Marine Sciences in Venice. And his specialty is uh, marine and coastal and geomorphological uh, fields with our environmental data management and processing, uh, spatial data infrastructures, implementation of decision support systems, um, standards, interoperability, uh, interoperability, the research of research data, I'm sorry. Um, he is also interested uh, and involved in various fields of openness. Uh, he's been with uh, OSGEO and GFOS. Um, also, uh, he's interested in open science, um, open knowledge, and he participates uh, in mapping at OpenStreetMap. Welcome, Alessandro. Um, if you could share your screen um, so we can uh, see your presentation uh, about uh, integration of authoritative and OSM uh, geospatial data sets in support of the European straight, uh, strategy for data. Okay. Trying to do that? Yeah. Could you confirm? Yeah. 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 So thank you very much, Christina, for <laughs> the, this introduction and for having me here and to chairing this, this very interesting session. So um, my presentation is, uh, is co-authored with um, Marco Minghini from uh, the Joinderson Center of the European Commission. And it's about uh, the um, um, integration uh, of authoritative, authoritative and uh, open street map to spatial data sets to support the European strategy for data. It's a first step towards this uh, integration. Uh, just a couple of slides about the uh, what is the uh, strategy for data at a European level. Uh, it's it's a, it's an um, initiative launched in, the, in the 2020 uh, within one of the priorities of uh, the 2019-2024 um, uh, period, uh, and it's inside the Europe Fit for the Digital Age. So about digital perspective into the um, European uh, framework. And uh, it's about the creation of a European single market for data. Um, in the next slide, we will see what is uh, about. But the main problems that uh, the strategy is trying to, to address are various and is about uh, very frequent problems when you talk about digital things. It's about data availability and licensing specifically uh, sharing, uh, interoperability services, quality. We've uh, heard about that uh, in the previous presentations. Um, governance of the data and uh, infrastructure and technologies, of course, but also people, so skills and data literacy and uh, cybersecurity more and more in the recent days. Um, you have uh, there the link uh, to the communication, but um, if we see what is inside this, uh, this uh, strategy for data, the aim is to establish uh, this common European data space that is made by uh, sectoral data spaces. If, if you, you can think about health, agriculture, finance, mobility, environment, energy, and all these elements um, sharing information across data spaces and with some uh, level of um, free flow of information and openness should benefit society and the economy. That's the, the main aim of the, of the strategy. Uh, and the combination of data should add um, value to the data itself, especially when they are uh, shared across actors and sectors. Um, having this as a general broad pictures, uh, we have to alight that uh, that's include also citizen generated data. And here we are moving towards the topic of the presentation. Because the, the the study we are um, we are starting here um, is about uh, a zoom into the domain of geospatial data. So the data spaces is not only about geospatial information, but here we are talking about specifically about this type of data, and um, using OpenStreetMap as a, an exemplary example of a citizen generated data, and. Uh, with a goal to try and find enablers and barriers 
of integrating citizen generated data in OpenStreetMap, as an example, with uh, authoritative uh, geospatial data, uh, for example, from a, a European National Mapping Agency. And here, the difference between uh, this study and the previous ones, because there are uh, some more studies dealing with the with combination or analysis between uh, um, citizen generated data and authoritative data, is it about trying to have an integrated data set, not only compare the data sets or uh, evaluate the quality, and also from the um, um, spatial scale, we're, we're having here an attempt to work at the national level, um, comparing uh, to the most of the exercises at the literature. Um, we've reviewed that are about a uh, regional or local level. Um, so these two elements are adding something to the already existing um, work that has been done in this context. And the output are not uh, specifically the technicalities included in this uh, exercise, but are um, the, some recommendations, both on the technical, but also semantic, organizational, and legal interoperability, trying to support this data space perspective in the European strategy. And here uh, we present uh, this first experiment focused on the, let's say, simple type of uh, data set that the, um, uh, the national address data set in uh, Finland and the two information uh, data sets we are comparing are again OpenStreetMap and the National Land Survey of Finland. Um, talking about these two elements, so we have from one side uh, the OpenStreetMap that uh, I think uh, most of you probably know about it, but it's a, a worldwide collaborative project, maybe probably the, the, the most relevant uh, related to the collaborative uh, project um, with uh, open data. And we have a specific uh, ODBL license, it's an open license. And we will talk a, a bit about um, the importance of the license later. We um, uh, highlight here that a, it has a simple flat data model uh, using some tags um, in the next slide, we uh, I, I will try and then briefly explain what, what it's about. But the, the important thing here is, is that an open flat model that can be enriched with multiple multiple tags. And uh, in this case, uh, we have used uh, it, it is possible to interact with uh, through APIs through the data uh, with the data in the database, but also with a bulk download of uh, full planet data set. And uh, on the side of National Land Survey in Finland, uh, it's a, an official national, uh, national data set. So we are talking about here the authoritative information. Again, it's open data, but with the Creative Commons attribution license. Um, it has been selected uh, um, in the European context uh, because it also uh, has an, an inspiring complete implementation of the addresses uh, data model that is defined uh, in the in the context of the Inspire um, directive in Europe. And uh, another reason to select this uh, data set is also because uh, it is served through uh, um, the OGC API features um, service. So a quite new service we've heard during this conference that OGC is moving all the standards towards uh, API type of standards. So uh, that's one of the reasons to test this type of um, uh, standard to retrieve the information. So very, very briefly about the data model of uh, OpenStreetMap. Uh, it contains three types of geometry, nodes, there are points, let's say, ways that are um, a list of uh, points of nodes, uh, really. Ways can be uh, open, like light, um, forming lines, or closed, forming the polygons, let's say. And then we have uh, relations that are connecting. So uh, the combination of nodes, ways, and uh, can uh, form uh, relations, can be connected through relations. And then we have the attribute part of the information that is about tags. Tags are simply a um, couple of keys and values that can be multiple, uh, depending on the rules that, that OpenStreetMap community um, 
gives uh, itself for, for uh, the definition of this type of information. If we look at the addresses in the table, you can see here um, four uh, tags that are the combination of uh, um, the key uh, ad for addresses um, and country, see the street house number, and a value about the um, country, city, street, uh, house number. The combination of these elements are forming the address in the OpenStreetMap. We can have more information, but these are the core ones that we, we can compare also with some information in the um, National Land Survey uh, dataset. That's a completely different type of approach. It's based on the Inspire UML data model for the addresses data theme. On the left, you have the, the, the graphic representation of the data model. We, we don't really care about the complexity, what you can see there. But um, uh, also, you, you can see this official and uh, standard implementation, so um, expression of the model. But uh, the European Commission is working a lot in the simplification, both of the data model and the encodings, moving from the GML to um, more uh, recent and modern types of encodings like uh, GeoJSON and also on the services we've talked about moving from the previous WMS, WFS or discovery services towards the APIs. And if we look at the, the core components of the address attributes for, uh, for the Inspire model, we can see these uh, six um, attributes in the uh, National Land Service of Finland. And we have, uh, again, the, the address number, the, the city, the country, and the name of the street, let's say. Um, and here we have the specificity to have three languages possible for, for uh, the name of the street in Finnish, Swedish, and uh, Sami. What we've done, so we, we have extracted the, um, the information from the OpenStreetMap and through the APIs uh, for uh, the authoritative Finnish uh, data set. We have used those attributes as, as a, um, a common uh, denominator to uh, combine the information. You can see on the image on the right, uh, the, um, the red dots for uh, the uh, National Land Survey information and the blue dots uh, for the points in OpenStreetMap and the, the black uh, polygons for the buildings because in OpenStreetMap you can have addresses um, included um, uh, attached to points or also buildings. And we have the this table that is the connection between the two models. And we have used the, the OpenStreetMap attributes as the simplified uh, reference to translate the attributes to. So in the conversion, we have a, in, an integrated data set having the OSM attributes as the um, uh, stored information. And you can see that here we have uh, included the Finnish name, but um, um, internally, when the Finnish name sometimes is not present, it's there has been used uh, the sorry the, the the Swedish name in some regions. So this is uh, the slide trying to explain the workflow we have implemented, and it's a step by step reproducible workflow that has been implemented quite in a simple way. Let's say uh, through the QGIS graphical model, we wanted to have uh, an easy way can express also the workflow uh, in a graphical way. And then the, the integrated data set has been stored, is stored in the in a geopackage uh, format. So we haven't used the, um, the Postgres or PostGIS for the analysis. Mm. So uh, on the small image in the center, you can see many boxes and there are various steps, but here on the right, and these models, sorry, uh, are um, saved in a GitHub repository to be reused if you, if you want. And on the right, we have a simplified schema with uh, all the elements, we um, the steps we, we had. So for example, the integration of polygons and points uh, in uh, the OpenStreetMap, uh, converting the polygons to centroid and then merging information, then 
adding some information missing. So the schema is quite simple compared to, for example, the previous um, presentation. We don't have here a topological um, checking. We, we, we try to stick with the element of the full address information, the combination of the previous four attributes we've seen in the, in the slide. And when the two data set were combined, we, we decided to have as a reference the National Land Survey uh, data set. Um, so we, we, we kept when uh, the same address was found also in OpenStreetMap, we kept the, the authoritative, let's say, um, data set. And we, uh, so in the, in the integrated data set, we have all the bunch of information from the National Land Survey, plus those addresses that are present in OpenStreetMap that are not correspondent to the uh, authoritative data set. So at the end, we have one geo package with all this information. Um, about the results, graphically, again, on the right, uh, you can see the, 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 the Finland uh, represented in the, this um, uh, European Environmental Agency reference grid at 10 to 10 kilometer, where we can, we can see there um, the percentage of OpenStreetMap data compared to the National Land Survey. You can clearly see that the, the number of information, so we have many more information in the, in the um, Finnish National Land Survey than in OpenStreetMap, 3.3 million of the addresses uh, compared to half a million in OpenStreetMap. There's an, an even distribution, geographical distribution of our OpenStreetMap data. And this is due to uh, a few inputs that have been done, and the import is one of the type of way uh, to uh, have information in OpenStreetMap. There are the, the, the direct action of mapping uh, by people that can include uh, information looking at um, satellite images or going and map uh, in a survey on the field. The import are the more uh, structured way to have information in OpenStreetMap, and the important information from from um, authoritative data sets has been done only in some places because it's a complex uh, um, exercise. And of course, also that the presence of mappers uh, influence a lot the distribution of mapped element. And uh, we can see that a uh, high density of OpenStreetMap data is mainly related to urban areas where you have um, a higher density of population and you have more mappers and usually uh, you have more updated elements also in those areas. You can see the, the dark green areas are when you see them the more than 100% information is where uh, OpenStreetMap has more information, so a higher number of um, addresses compared to the National Land Survey and this is uh, explain a bit in this slide. So in, in the integrated data set, we have the 96% more or less of information that is coming from the National Land Survey. For that reason, we explained before, uh, we consider that uh, the reference information. And we have uh, uh, about 80,000 um, addresses from OpenStreetMap remained in the data set. But we have to be careful about that because some uh, data in OpenStreetMap uh, had wasn't found a correspondent address in the authoritative data set because about misspelled street or city names, for example. And in this way, this type of information, so in the process, we can found information that it's useful also to improve the OpenStreetMap information and database. Um, and there are cases in, um, instead where OpenStreetMap really actually includes more detailed information. You can see in the image, for example, in some areas uh, you have the letter indicating the stairs or the access point with the precise information of the access point uh, uh, mapped. And this is not present in the original uh, NLS data, data set. One slide about uh, licenses I've mentioned in the at the beginning. So. Most of the governmental data and geospatial information also comes under the uh, Creative Commons Attribution for uh, International License, the CC BY, um, and this is the case for the NLS dataset. 
and uh, we have OpenStreetMap with the ODBL, and those two licenses are not fully compatible. And this is one of the main issues discussed also during a few interviews we have, we've had with national and regional mapping authorities. Uh, and it's a, sometimes a blocking, a blocking uh, issue that prevents uh, governments to work directly in uh, improving OpenStreetMap because you don't have the uh, easily the way back to retrieve information and reuse with a different license. It's a technical uh, distinction, but it's quite important then in the in the in this governance of information when you, we talk integrating uh, open open data. So importing um, CC BY data in OpenStreetMap requires, for example, from the perspective of the OpenStreetMap Foundation, an additional explicit permission, and this can be done. But the other way around, so including OpenStreetMap data in uh, some data sets released as CC BY, for example would require to release the integrated data under the ODBL. And this is something that is not uh, easily uh, reused by the government. Finally, last slide. So that the first um, conclusion, and that's a starting point, is that any data integration process should be carefully prepared, knowing the specificity of the data set. We have two data sets that seems to be quite standard. But for example, in OpenStreetMap, if you talk about the mapping habits or rules in a country, they could be a bit different from another country because, for example, in Finland, many addresses didn't have uh, the city associated. It can be retrieved, but you can implement, you have to implement a tool where you retrieve the information from, for example, from other data set. And um, the same, um, and from a technical perspective, anyway, there are phosphor G tools uh, uh, that can enable the integration quite easily. And this mapping between models is not so complex, at least for this type of information. It, that's a point information uh, with uh, a few attributes to to match. There are national specificities also. For example, if we talk about addresses, uh, there are different uh, rules in composing the addresses in different countries in Europe. Um, but for for this purpose, the Inspire interoperability, uh, that, so the data model in Inspire can ease the application on, in other countries. But not all the countries have uh, uh, implemented the, their address data set through Inspire, and if yes, not always are published with an open license to be reused, for example, in OpenStreetMap. Again, licensing compatibility is a, is a major problem for this two-way exchange of information. Uh, we have also to consider that uh, OpenStreetMap is becoming a more complex ecosystem, not only from citizen volunteers, but also governments are trying to enter and contribute or and to use the information but also private and business companies. And this has to be tackled and, and managed also when we try and want to integrate information. And this again, we start, we, we, we end with the start, uh, with the start in information. This is only a first step for a wider discussion also that should try to, um, yeah, start a, a permanent collaboration between institutional mapping agencies or a government or a, uh, institutions and OpenStreetMap because this is a value for in the con context of the uh, European uh, strategy for data, but also for the society, citizen, and also businesses that can reuse information because this is open data and um, the integration of these two type uh, these two words can improve both the uh, the data sets. And this should be tried, uh, should be uh, fostered in the, in the future. This is the paper that uh, is connected with the presentation. And with that, I thank you for, for the attention. These are the emails that can be used for any information in addition to what we uh, will be able to discuss in the next few minutes. Thanks again. Thank you so much, Alessandro. Very interesting presentation, and um, you sparked quite a debate on the on the chat there. So we already have a few questions for you. I'm gonna um, um, tell you um, in the order that they came. 
so the first okay. one would be uh, how do you deal with integration of geospatial data sets that have different levels of generalization? Of? Sorry, I, I uh, missed the, the last word. Uh, how would you deal with a different uh, geospatial data sets that have different levels of generalization? Generalization, so different scales. Yes. I mean, yeah. Um, so that is, a, of course, an issue, especially when you maybe talk about um, land use or uh, uh, information that is partially uh, represented in, in the wider areas. When you talk about addresses, usually it, it, it's a point, so the scale uh, uh, is, is really different. But this, of course, has to be considered because um, OpenStreetMap usually uh, it's a multi-scale database but can arrive really to a, um, a very big scale depending on the habit of the mappers and the uh, images that uh, can be used and this has to uh, it's related to the first line of the my last slide so integration has to be uh, uh, considered depending on the data set you are dealing with so in this case uh, we, we try to avoid this type of complexity at least um, thank you. Uh, the next question uh, asks you if it's possible to integrate geodata, which has um, been uh, designed for very different purposes and are presenting their reality in completely different ways. If they are so different, uh, you shouldn't try to, to put it together. Um, it, it's not the case in the, in, the, in the example we've done. And I think the the integration has to be done with some some project in mind and uh, with a purpose and an idea on how to reuse the integrated data set. Of course, if you want to use it for uh, authoritative uh, update of the original data set, you, you have to be careful. If you want to study for a, for a uh, study in the school, uh, it's a different purpose. But in this case, we are talking about European strategy for data. Uh, you should choose very carefully the two or more data set you want to integrate, of course. Uh, we have another question uh, that has been outvoted. Um, integrating point data is the first step. So what about the other kind of data? Lines, areas, networks, tessellations? Yeah. So, uh, of course, we started from the simplest. <laughs> and that's a good point uh, to start with. Mm, if, with, if you think about buildings, for example, um, uh, you can maybe think uh, to have an approach, and we've discussed in one of the, of the um, interviews we've, we had, um, so not trying to compare the, the specific outline of the building, but, but having a reference grid or tessellation of the area that allows you to only try a specific integration where you have a bigger difference in the in the two data sets so for example talking about OpenStreetMap if you have an area where you have more information in OpenStreetMap that your reference authoritative um, um, layer or a data set you should maybe try and focus on that area and try to have a specific integration so simplifying the type of topologic er errors that if you think at continental level, I think it, it shouldn't try to do that uh, only automatically. So you have to focus probably, probably on those hotspots of information where you find some more differences. Um, if not, uh, it, it would be a, a very different type of approach. Again, in the coming steps, we would try to do something like that. Uh, I'm going to take another question for you. Um, can this approach be reused for other countries? Um, if the national mapping agency is happy to provide their own data sets. And um, it, the attendee asks, uh, you have outlined the steps um, to reproduce this in QGIS, but uh, would it be a brand new process for every additional uh, national mapping agency? Um, okay, it's it, it would uh, so it shouldn't be a, a brand new um, workflow, but some elements will be different because, uh, um, for example, we, we, we've, we've tried, we, we had some work on the, the, the Netherlands and they have a very solid um, database uh, shared uh, and reused. 
and imported in OpenStreetMap. So you have a different situation. You have OpenStreetMap that is more or less at the same level because it's aligned with the official one, but the official one is not easily downloadable as Inspire compliant. So uh, I think some main elements, especially from the OpenStreetMap side, are 90% the same. From the national side, if you start from the Inspire compliant, uh, you have mostly, uh, the, you should have the same issue and the same type of workflow. If you start from an open data set, but in a different data model, you have to calibrate in a different way your, your workflow. That's that the purpose of the interoperability that Inspire should have helped in these years. Um. We have three more questions. Uh, uh, if you can provide a very quick answer to each of them, and yeah. then you can go uh, and uh, have a discussion, maybe privately, uh, so you can have more. Um, so we have this question about, uh, from a legal point of view, which uh, is, in your opinion, better to base our decisions on, um, OpenStreetMap or the national uh, data? It depends on the. <laughs> on the country and the type of information. Um, uh, uh, the authoritative and, and national data set should be the official one, so should be carefully uh, checked. OpenStreetMap can be more updated. That's the, the main difference, uh, depending on the community the, behind. It's um, not a we're also straight asking, question. Um... <laughs> Uh, we're also asked uh, if you considered that the governmental data has a backlog of one to three years uh, when you did your analysis. Have, have what? A backlog of one to three years. So basically, I think it's... Uh... Uh, yeah, um, it, it can be. Um, in Italy, uh, I would say that uh, there are a few years of, <laughs> of um, backlog. And for other... Um, Data sets like the, the, the Netherlands, probably also the Finnish one, I think they are quite updated. There are updates uh, every month. Uh, so that should be not an issue for buildings or land use. You could have uh, a quite bigger lag. Thank you. And a final question. Uh, if you compare the OSM data with governmental data regarding street networks, I think you already answered this a little bit. I, I didn't, so we didn't in this exercise. There are various uh, um, works um, also in the literature that uh, did that, and we, we, we tried to avoid that. That's probably the most complicated things to do. Thank you so much, uh, Alessandro. Uh, it was a really nice presentation. Thank you also to the audience for keeping this uh, discussion very lively. Um, we wish you a very nice Phosphor G and uh, whoever wants to contact Alessandro, um, you have his contact on the banner and also it's 